This is NCC Unplugged. Welcome back to another episode of NCC Unplugged. We have another great episode here. My name is Jeff Terpstra. I'm the preaching minister at Norwin Christian Church. And if you joined us before on this podcast, you know, something that we like to do is interview our church members and just get their testimonies, their stories, it's just to kind of a way to share about what God is doing in their lives. I think it's been a great encouragement to listen to several now. And uh, so I am joined here in our podcast studio with two more of our uh, church people, Jerry and Cindy Burke. You guys want to say hello? Hi. Hello. <laughs> it, it's weird talking to the microphone. Yeah, we'll get used to it. Okay. Um, I got to know them. Uh, I think you guys were coming to the church before this, but I got to know you guys during COVID a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> My first memory of you guys is doing our scavenger hunt. I knew yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> coming. <laughs> we did, uh, during COVID, when we couldn't socialize, uh, we did a scavenger hunt, so everybody got in their car, and we used an app that sent us throughout North Huntington and beyond to do different uh, challenges, and I was cracking up at the videos you guys would send in. I don't even remember what, what the scavenger hunt, uh, what the different things were that you guys were doing, but... I remember singing in the car was one, something you guys did for some reason. <laughs> you, you had someone with you. Was it okay. a grandchild? It was Just Caden. Gay. Yes, our, okay. our oldest. You're grandson. trying to get him to participate, and he yeah. was like, not too excited about it, but yeah. your laughter is contagious, and <laughs> he eventually got into it. So yeah. that's how I got introduced to you guys a little bit. So I'm glad that uh, some more get to meet you through this podcast. Start off by telling us a little bit about yourselves. Who wants to go first? I'll go first. Okay. Okay. Well, I'm Cindy, and we've been going to this church since when Joshua started. Okay. And uh, Pam Van Ryn, she introduced us to this church, mm. and uh, we really liked it. What got me was I really liked the music, mm. the worship. I thought mm -hmm. it was just so uplifting, and everybody was so welcoming. Good. Thank you. Jerry, tell us a little bit about yourself. Um, well, Sydney and I, we've been married, is it coming up, 42 years? Yes. And um, Cindy and I met in college, and we got married right after college. Mm -hmm. um, and the funny thing was, at that time, I was a Methodist, Cindy was, was Catholic, and so I would go to church with, with them. Mm -hmm. And... Um, uh, I, I converted there and, um, we were both Cindy and I, we were going there and we just, we sort of felt like a number. We weren't getting, mm. there wasn't that, um, you know, we're, we're both, you know, believers, but it was just like you, you go to church and you, you met your one week obligation mm. and then you were done and you lived your life and we just there was this yearning we needed more a relationship and, yeah. with jesus yes. Yes. that's do what you, i said do you guys think you always had a sense of that or was there something that brought that well for me i'm sorry i didn't interrupt you bean um whenever i was uh a young young and I was in the uh, Methodist church growing up, I wasn't that active. You know, mm -hmm. I was kind of that wild kid, you, you know, and I remember th them trying to get me to go to youth group on Sundays, but I had baseball practice Sunday mm -hmm. night. So uh, I would, I would always miss. And then when, whenever I converted to the Catholic faith, there was this thing that hit me that was, Oh boy, for me to get into heaven, I'd better memorize these prayers. Like how mm -hmm. how do you pray? Mm -hmm. So, you know, I already had our father memorized, but then the Hail Mary and the um I'm kind of there was the Apostles Creed that we said. I thought I I really thought that I had to have that memorized mm -hmm. that whenever I went that if I died, that you know, um whichever saint was at the at the pearly gates, that I that if I couldn't say that I wouldn't get in. Yeah, a quiz. A quiz. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And it was like, and so 
whenever we started coming here, there were just dots that started to be con- connected with hmm. with with me. And yeah. the real turning point to me was whenever Cindy and I we talked about it and, and we just decided to be baptized. Mm-hmm. And that first time, whenever well. The first time, I was a baby back in the yeah. uh, Methodist church, but this time, it, it really hit home with me that I, I'm i making this choice. Mm-hmm. I want this. And whenever Joshua baptized me, it, it whenever I come out of the water, there was this, like, wow, I got to learn, you know, even more. And so I... You know, joined the you, you know uh, one of the small groups started going. I th- I think there might have been a time, Jeff, where whenever we were, I was joining that that first small group, we were, you bring me back to get a book, and I and I said to you, "Well, I've never read the Bible. I wouldn't understand the Bible." Mm-hmm. Well, I after that immersion and come out and starting to read the Bible, everything connects now wow. for me and um i just um to yeah me, you it, know, it's really nice too because we're able to talk about it mm-hmm. where before we never talked about religion really mm-hmm. but we talk now about things in our bible studies or i'll say did you know that and he'll say no and did you know that yeah. and so it's kind of nice that we're able to talk about yeah. that so cindy what was it like for you leaving the catholic faith because i know I mean, especially growing up in it, right? And having other family members, it can there can be a lot of uh, baggage sometimes with it, guilt, shame, hurt. Yeah. I, well, I grew up with the Catholic faith, so mm-hmm. I can say I had religion, mm-hmm. but I didn't have a relationship mm-hmm. with Jesus. Mm-hmm. And in fact, I even taught in a Catholic school for okay. three years. I taught middle school okay. out in Greensburg, and. Uh, there was just so much. I needed more, mm-hmm. and um, it, it's been really good. I feel like this church is my family. It's mm-hmm. another family, mm-hmm. and uh, I like the connections we make with people. I like that we're reaching out to people, too, mm-hmm. which, yeah. you know, through the Blessing Boutique and going on mission trips and just mm-hmm. being involved with the missions. I really yeah. like that going out. Cool. So since you've been here, so five years, maybe six years. No, it's about six years. Six years? Yeah. Okay, mm-hmm. I'm sorry. How has God grown you? Well, I'll tell you what. Um, I'll be 11 years May. I was diagnosed with cancer. And I'll tell you what, the first few years were really rough. And mm-hmm. um, it really helped me get through it. Uh Jesus has really given me a sense of peace when mm. there shouldn't be peace. I can remember a friend of mine, she took me down to the Irwin playground and we sat on the stage and she said, can I pray with you? And I've never had anybody say that to me, you know, can I pray with you? And I said, mm-hmm. sure. That was the day before I was going into surgery. And uh, when I went into surgery the next day, I even told Jerry, I said, I had this sense of peace and I mean, I was scared, yes, but it turned out the best that it could have mm-hmm. considering the circumstances. And even the last surgery I just had last May, at night, I felt like Jesus was in that room with me. Hmm. You know, it, it just felt calm mm-hmm. and peaceful. And um, I go for my scans and... I always imagine that Jesus is there with me, wrapping his arms around me as I go through that tube and come back out, and uh, that he's holding my hands to get through it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, one thing I wanted to ask you, because I know you've, I'll see your prayer requests that Mm -hmm. you write and and pray for you, and our staff prays over those prayer requests, but then I see you again on a Sunday, and you're all laughter. You're, you know, you just have a smile. How do you keep that? I mean, I guess you're saying you just sense that piece. It, it doesn't make sense. But how do you keep the positive outlook on life, the joy that you do while going through so many of these different health issues? Well, 
I tried, the one doctor said to me, you can either live your life and just live your life, Mm -hmm. or you could sit and worry about it. Mm -hmm. The week before, oh, I worry about it. I there's mm. tears, there's anxiety, they call it anxiety. Mm. But during the rest of the time, I try not to let it get to me. I yeah. try to just, you know, keep very busy. So with my life, with our kids, with church, you know, mm-hmm. I just keep busy and try yeah. not to think about it. Yeah. Because it'll pull me down. Mm-hmm. So what's your encouragement to people that are listening? Maybe they've heard that C word cancer before for their results. And it's a scary word. It is. What, what's your encouragement to them? Hey, you know, they're in the middle of this right now. Maybe they, maybe they do have Jesus, maybe they don't. But what is your, Let your go. advice? Let go of the control. Wow. I was such a control person in my life. I mm-hmm. just, with everything, with the kids, with when I taught, I was just like control. Mm-hmm. And I knew I could not do this. Hmm. And I just knew. Mm-hmm. And so I just give it up to God. And and it's funny because it's kind of trickled down into my life too. Like, okay, going on the mission trips, I didn't know what to expect, but I'm like, okay, I'm going, you know, it's you yeah. know, good. And it's going to be what it's going to be. And it was always better than I thought it would be. Cool. You know, so in my life, it's tr- trickled down too, yeah. which has been really good. Do you think sometimes the trickle even goes the other way where you learn to let go of control in other areas and oh. that helps you oh definitely yeah. i mean even with i was subbing preschoolers and now i just like have fun with them it's like okay I'll <laughs> you get can't on. be in tr- control of those preschoolers no, <laughs> they're in control of me <laughs> yeah. but you know i just have fun with them and I, it, i'm not as serious with yeah. things you know hmm. he always says you're living in your own little world and i said and it's a good place to be <laughs> you know because well, yeah. you know i just you can be upset and just let, th- and even the way things are now in this world, you could let things get to you. But when it comes down to it, then mm-hmm. you're not living, mm-hmm. you know, and that's not what Jesus wants. He wants you to be happy mm-hmm. and live. Mm-hmm. Yeah, life's hard, but you got to keep moving. Yeah. It's interesting you said not to take life too serious. I mean, so many people come up against these health diagnoses and they're they take it even more serious, right? Because oh, yes. then that's all their life becomes is more appointments and scans and results and all of that. So have you found a trick in life, you know, to to pick up a habit of something so that you don't take things too serious? I think my devotions in the morning help me. It mm. gives me a sense of peace and a start for my day. You mm-hmm. know, if I miss it in the morning, I try to get it caught up sometime in the day. Yeah. But um also, I think trying to help other people. Mm. I really enjoy talking to people and trying to help other people. Cool. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Jerry, during that season of life when, I mean, you hear your wife has cancer, what was that like for you? And then what was your reaction to it? How did you okay. process that? Um, I Whenever... We were going down to Pittsburgh to meet with the surgeon because um, we, Cindy knew there was something in inside of her stomach, and mm. she, I even felt it one time. It was it was a cantaloupe sized mm. mass that was attached to her colon. Whenever, like Cindy said, oh, you know, we were driving there, and she said, "Jerry, this is an oncologist surgeon. Do you think this is cancer?" And I'm like. No, nah, this is pr- you had a lipoma several years. This, this mm. is nothing serious. Well, the doctor walks in, serious as can be, serious look, mm-hmm. and he starts to rattle off what she has. And we're that he's, you know, thank heavens it's on the left side because he might have to take out her, her kidney. Her um, part of well, my part, colon, yeah, yeah, part of the colon, and it was a whole list of things that mm. it was going to be a major surgery. And Cindy, as I looked looked at her, you know, just that was the first time that we knew it was cancer. Wow, yeah. I shut got, down. Yeah, yeah, we we really didn't know at that time. Yeah. We were just kind of clueless, you know. The surgeon assumed we knew. Yeah. Uh, okay. So there's some miscommunication, and he he was just 
coming right out with it. Yeah. And saying, yeah. this is what we're going to do. Yeah. And we both went, what, yeah. it caught us off guard. Yeah, and Cindy, um, you know, from my pers- perspective, then that all of a sudden put, put me on game face. You mm. know, I was, you know, I'm serious now. Cindy getting that news like that, I just, you know, she just like kind of zoned out. I shut down. She was down. there. And so I'm asking all the, well, what if this, what if that, mm-hmm. what are we, you know, and yeah. the, the pointed qu- questions. And and then we spent, a, it was a long day down at UPMC getting tests done so that we could get the the surgery on the calendar and get it moving and so it all went well, you know, it, it took her a while to heal, but, you know, she healed. And then the next step of the journey to prevent the cancer from coming back, we were, we were told, it, well, it's like a 60-40, 50-50, but you should do chemo. Mm-hmm. And the chemo treatment was, um, it was very intensive due to the type of cancer that she had. It mm-hmm. was, uh, they were... It's an, an aggressive type, yeah. but where where we've been blessed now, here we are like 11 years later, the cancer hasn't been aggressive with her, mm-hmm. but it keeps coming back. Yeah. But it, we've been blessed, you know, yeah. she's, you know, you could never tell. Yeah. I, I, I'm, I'm just amazed by her that, you know, the battle that she has fought with this and seeing, yeah. you know, what all she's been yeah. through, you know, you'd never know. Yeah. It's God. Know. It's God. God. It's yeah. God. Yeah. Um, one other thing he did, he was going back and forth to work. I, at that mm. time, was staying with my parents because our daughter and the boys lived with us. And because they were bringing stuff home from school, it was safer for me to stay with my parents. So mm-hmm. he'd come every day after work to my parents' house, which they didn't live far but he'd come and spend some time and then he'd have to go home and take care of the dogs and mm-hmm. whatever he had to do at home. And uh, it was hard. Yeah. And I never even realized, because he always kept a real good front, but friends of mine would tell me, wow, it was really hard on him. Mm-hmm. He, you know, People at work would tell me that his work and my one friend told me, and I never even realized. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, now... We go to the doctor's appointments. All I hear is, it's a good scan. Okay, I'm out of here. And he's asking questions. And I'm like, oh, so if anybody's out there, make sure you have somebody go with you yeah. when you know, you're know you going through something like this. Yeah. I mean, Jerry, you say she was fighting a battle, and she absolutely was. But you're fighting right alongside with yeah. her. Yeah, And I know that. Yeah. And that made a huge difference yeah. for Cindy. And we still are because we had a misdiagnosis. Hmm. They were telling us it was one thing, and now we just found out they think it's something else. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And here again, well, the C word is bad no, no matter what. Yeah, it's a, another the, type and, of cancer. And, mm-hmm. and the new one, it isn't like it's a less aggressive. It's still one of those nasty ones. But yeah. here again, you know, by the grace right. of God, you know, we fought yeah. this thing. Yeah. And, yeah. Um, yeah. and, he, and he takes me down for my appointments. He ranges his schedule at work, and wow. so I'm greatly yep. appreciative of everything he does. So, um, you guys want to share about your professions? You said you're a teacher for a bit. Yeah, I, when I got out of college, I taught middle school for three years. Okay. I taught reading and science, and then we start having a family, and I stayed home, raised the kids, and then. I started to teach preschool. So I went from middle school to preschool. <laughs> yeah, it's just about the same. It's all about me. <laughs> but, uh, and I really enjoyed that age. Yeah. And that was when our youngest was two. I started over at Calvary. Okay. And then after that, I was there for 10 years, 10 or 11 years. And then one of the parents approached us about starting a preschool down at the First Presbyterian Church in Irwin. Hmm. So we did that, and uh, that's I did that for 10 years. And then it was really strange because there were things going on with the preschool. And um, I went in, and we had a meeting, and I said, I don't think I'm coming back. 
And it was like, where did those words come from? Huh. So you weren't prepared to say that? I, I No. Had a, wow. I had thought about it, but I wasn't going to mm-hmm. say that. Mm-hmm. And it came out, and a couple weeks later, I was diagnosed with the cancer. Wow. And uh, so God knew I had to get better first. Mm-hmm. And then I had thought about maybe trying to start another preschool. And my mom kept saying, you don't want to do that. Because she knew, you know, my health. Mm-hmm. And um, then I was approached to sub over at Happy Apple Preschool. Mm-hmm. And that worked out great. So I subbed and um, for about five years there. And mm-hmm. this year, I think I'm just going to help out in the office a little bit. But the director approached me about doing adult craft classes. So now I'm teaching adults. And Very that's cool. where I'm at. You're doing like the teaching circuit all around. Right. I've taught every <laughs> age cool. group. You know, I've cool. taught from yeah. two-year-olds, a play group, up to adults. Because yeah. I even taught, for a while, uh, religion classes to high school, ninth okay. graders. Okay. So. Very neat. Yeah. And now you're also on to becoming a grandmother. I mean, yeah. not becoming. You have been for a right. while. So yeah. that's a job all in of itself, right? As your grandparents. And, and that's it. We want to see the kids. Yeah. We have one that lives in Belfont and they have two boys. Yeah. My our daughter, who's our second child, she lives around here and that's Gage's mm-hmm. mom and Cadence. So they're close by. And then our youngest, he's in Wheeling and they have a two year old and they just had a baby. Excellent. Excellent. Well, Jerry, what about you? What have you done over your life as far as a profession? Oh uh, well. I want to talk, well, I wanted to say I have 65 calendar days until I retire. <laughs> oh, and, 65, uh, September wow. September 3rd is my last official Yeah, work cross day. those off as they come. <laughs> yeah. at, so, oh, that's so cool. Um, I'll start with that ending point. But my, my career, I've been in the security field since I graduated from college. Okay. Um, my major in college... Uh, Sydney and I met at IUP, but I was a a criminology major. Um, always, I always wanted to go into law enforcement, uh, um, policing, but um, the way things were at that time, it just didn't work out. And I, I ended up, I, I started at Children's Hospital of Pittsburgh hmm. in their their public safety department, and I was a uh, officer there, and I worked my way up the, uh, you know, the totem pole. Mm-hmm. And um, at my 10 year mark, I was the assistant director of, of, of public safety. And, um, and I, uh, tragically, my boss who I worked for him the entire time, he, he died as a very young man with a massive heart attack mm-hmm. at age 37. And so I was in the acting director okay. role and then this i saw this other job post posted and i i applied for the director of se- security at saint francis medical center so i took that job and went on and okay. i was there for 11 years i thought you know what i found my home this is where i'm going to be and then St. Francis had financial troubles mm. and they closed. Mm. And so for eight months there, I um, I was, I had a job. Uh, well, I got a job ac- actually b- before St. Francis closed. It, um, it, and I, that it was with Western Psychiatric and their um, sa- safety staff. But I was a... Uh, I was the evening shift safety supervisor. Mm. And it was, you know, a lot of the same stuff that I yeah. was doing at working n- working nights though. Yes. Yeah, and um the and it's a psychiatric in, in environment which is can be very challenging. Mm-hmm. I'd imagine. Um and as I worked that job I and seeing the the safety staff, other staff, you know, getting hurt, dealing with some of the um, the patients there that were having troubles, and um, I thought, geez, this is more of a young man's job. I'm mm. getting too old to be, you know, having to wrestle with somebody and bring them down yeah. to a quiet room. I'm getting too <laughs> old for this. And then I saw a, 
a, a job posted for the director of se- security at Falling Water in Mill Run. And I thought, oh, you know, maybe, I, you know, I'm going to apply for that. Mm-hmm. So I applied for it and I went up for the first interview and it was like, oh, wow, I fell in love with the place because yeah. it, you see, um, my hobbies have been the outdoors, fishing, hunting, just things out outside. Mm-hmm. And I just fell in love with being up there. And I thought, Very oh, cool. yeah. this is going to be a neat job if if I get it. And that first interview, whenever um, Cindy wrote, wrote up with me, I, I re- re- remember because we had a date day, you know, because I was off okay. in the mid- middle of the day and... And, you know, I went down, had the interview, and they offered me, they said, well, do you want to do a tour of the house? I said, well, my wife's waiting, you know, back up at the visitor center. And I promised her we were like doing a date day. And they said, well, you know, no, no, no pressure. So I went up and I asked Cindy and Cindy said, well, you know, she wanted to go to Ligonier and shop. And then we were going to go up into Laurel Mountains. I was going to show her some of the places where I hunted. And I, and I just said, you know what? I, it's all right. I, and she goes, well, you might not get, get the job if you... I said, that's fine. I, I, I have a job. Yeah. So, so we left. We, you know, I didn't do the tour. And I thought, oh, I'm done. You know, they're not... <laughs> and... And I, as a matter of fact, I was even going to withdraw my name. I was hmm. thinking about it, and I had the uh, human resources person, her her name and number, and she called me that that day. And I'm like, "Oh, Nancy, I'm so glad that you that you called. I was planning on calling you, but I think I'm going to with withdraw my name. You know, it's kind of far. Yeah." Mm-hmm. And she's her. She said to me. Jerry, no, you can't do that. You're our best candidate. <laughs> you know? So I thought, oh, so I thought, I, th- okay, I'll follow the follow the process. And so I got the job. I, you know, I love it. Or, you know, I, lo- I've been there 21 years. Wow. Um, from the security perspective, um, whenever I walked into that job, they, there were. There was no one in that position before I got there. Hmm. And all they had was some this cardboard box that they gave me that had some files from from <laughs> like some of the staff had gone away to a conference here or there and somebody t- so I had nothing and yeah. I and I've built the um, security program there to it's like a you know as far as the electronic a- access can control alarm systems, camera surveillance. Hmm. Um, one of my one of my greatest gifts that I feel is um, if you were to go to the Falling Water website, this is not a commercial, but, <laughs> but the they have their webcam, which is and it's the iconic view. Hmm. And um, about Four years into the job, we got a new CEO, and we were all told to come up with a big, bold idea. Well, at that time, our oldest son, Patrick, was snowboarding, and he was always going online and looking at Seven Springs and Hidden Valley at their webcams to see what the, you know, what the slope Mm -hmm. conditions were. And, And just being at Falling Water, it's like, I'll bet you that if we had a webcam, since we get all this tour, tourist um, traffic from all over the world, this this will be a really neat and yes. big thing. Matt appreciates yeah. that. <laughs> and uh, so I found the right um, security contractor, and we talked it through. We got it to where we got power down to the view, yeah. Uh, we were using wireless whenever it first come out to transmit hmm. from the view up back over to the house. And it was the, from what I, what I hear and I don't, you know, I'm not involved with the web, but 
that iconic view uh, webcam mm -hmm. is the most um, viewed page in our falling water. Very cool. <laughs> yeah, and I, I was just like, and I just feel so good that that, that will always be, I, I yeah. feel like that yeah, is yeah, yeah. My, yeah. my gift. Yeah, so if, if you're listening, you don't know what Falling Water is. It's a Frank, Frank, <laughs> Frank Lloyd, Lloyd Wright, Wright designed, uh, house. designed house up in Mill Run, and it's on the way to Ohio Pile. You probably mm -hmm. have passed it, not thought about it. And if you want to meet Jerry, just go there and break something <laughs> on accident, and you'll, you'll meet Jerry or you know start going off on an employee, and Jerry will yeah. show up and be like, oh, yeah, I just wanted to meet Jerry. That's, 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 that's fun. Um, and then maybe he'll take you somewhere after that. Yeah. Um, so what, for you guys, you're in the stage of being grandparents. What is what is one highlight, maybe your favorite part of being a, a grandparent? Something you love from this stage of life? Mine is um, I'm really enjoying the kids. Where when mm. you're living life with little ones, because our kids were like the, with Courtney and Patrick, there was two and a half years, and then there was about four years till Eric came along. So you're just so busy with life, you mm -hmm. don't stop in and enjoy. Mm -hmm what you're doing and you just got to keep moving, you know, to the next thing. <laughs> and I keep telling my kids, enjoy them because they're yeah. just little for so short of a time frame. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I just enjoy them. I was just there last week helping out with the baby and with Emmy. That's our two year old granddaughter. And I had so much fun with her. We did a sticky wall where to contact paper and we stuck it on the wall and then she's sticking things on mm -hmm. it and just seeing her cool. learning and it, it's a lot of fun. Yeah. Yeah. What about you, Jerry? What's something you've been enjoying being a grandparent? I just, um, you know, with our grandchildren, there you go from 19 to, to newborn and just seeing all the different stages and, um, I'm I'm more of a fun loving guy, you know. Mm -hmm. I have a dry sense of humor, I know, and and I have like my stupid jokes and things that <laughs> I do to try to get them to laugh. Yeah, but I'm um, just getting them to to laugh and come up and play. I I, I just love yeah. each age group. Each one is, you know, so special. Cool. And yeah, he even taught our oldest grandson to drive, and mm. now Gage is like when he. He's going to be 16 soon. You're going to teach me, Pappy? You're going to yeah. teach me? So it's cool. neat. And our other two boys, they play soccer. So, you know, our youngest was involved in soccer. So it's like we're reliving that. Yeah. And we get to see them play. Very cool. So it's neat. So, Cindy, you mentioned uh, the mission trip a little bit. Mm -hmm. So um, what number of mission trip is this going to be for you? The second one. The second one. Uh -huh. And this is going to be a little bit different because you're going to have one of your – you're going to have Gage with you, right? Yes. One of your grandchildren. Be. Um, so tell me, tell me about your, uh, the process of you getting involved in missions and kind of how that's well, maybe, like, you've talked a little bit about having a different perspective on life with things. Right. Well, when I was teaching the one uh, woman who started to teach with us when, you know, we needed another teacher, she did mission trips with her church mm -hmm. and I really wanted to go on a trip with her. She was mm. going to a Native American reservation, which is basically what we're doing this time, and mm -hmm. it was in New Mexico. And it just didn't work out. The timing wasn't right. And so I think that kind of gave me this little spark to mm -hmm. you know look into it. And mm -hmm. I just thought that would be really interesting. I like to travel mm -hmm. and meet people. And uh, so that's how I got involved, yeah. and I enjoy it. Very cool. Tell me about some of the other things that you are involved in at NCC. I do the Blessing Boutique, and that mm. I love that. I love seeing the girls so excited. Yeah, um, I can tell you a story about a lady. I went and picked a gown up from her, and it was a brand new, beautiful gown. She said her daughter got it, brought it home. The prom was canceled because of COVID that mm. same day. So she said they hung on to this gown, and um, she said it's time. So I went and picked the gown up, brought it here to the church, and I was out in the lobby working. Well, somebody needed a break with the girls, so I went in, and there was a young lady trying this gown on. Mm. And I said to her, and she ended up getting it. 
I said to her mom, can I take a picture of her and send it to this mom and girl? That donated it. Wow. Uh-huh. And she said, yes. And I sent it to this woman and her daughter, and they were so excited to see Very that. Cool. Um, just that's one story, you mm-hmm. know, just seeing the girls, you know, they'll give us a hug or just, they're just so appreciative. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's really kind of cool. Yeah. So the Blessing Boutique gives free gowns and dresses to to girls going to homecoming and prom. Right. And that you're right. I mean, that ministry is such a blessing to so many people. Right. And I mean, the amount of dresses that oh, we have stuffed in closets. We had over a thousand and, you oh, know, they get incredible. shoes and makeup and, yeah. you know, that might not seem like much, but I'll tell you what, those kids appreciate it. Mm-hmm. Their parents appreciate it. Mm-hmm. And they come and they say, we didn't expect to have lunch. Right. You know, they, we, they, we give them lunch and they just yeah. love it. Yeah. And you guys... And the ladies that run it do such a good job in in emphasizing we're doing this in the name of Jesus. Right. You know, on the surface, it's a free dress. Right. But underneath it is us showing uh, the dignity and worth that these girls have. And, and right. they give them devotions with the, like, so just, mm-hmm. it's, it's, a, it's a ministry really well run with purpose. Right. And there's Christian music being mm-hmm. played. And, mm-hmm. um, you know, I just think that, People, it makes them feel good and yeah. feel loved yeah. yeah, cared about. Um, yeah. I also do the desk the fifth Sunday of every month, so I'm not okay. too involved in mm-hmm. that. But The I front desk? The front desk, yeah. yeah. And I'm, all, I'm on the mission team, so mm-hmm. those are the yeah, things. And cool. I help out with Vacation Bible School as much yep. as I can. Yep. Very cool. Yeah. Jerry, what about you? What are some different things you're involved in around here? Well, um, as I... Mentioned before, being in the security field for 42 years and hearing that we had a safety team here, yeah, I thought, oh, well, this this is what I know. So I wanted to bring mm-hmm. my skill set to that. Mm-hmm. Now, of course, I've been in like a management role, but I just want to be a worker bee. Yeah, I just want to <laughs> be there, and I just want to. I'm. I always look at it as I'm more of a sheepdog whenever mm. I'm doing it. I, I have this task to watch over the sheep. Mm-hmm. And, you know, Jesus is the sh- shepherd and all the members, everyone there, you know, they're here, they're following so you're what a the dog. shepherd. Yeah, so I'm a dog. <laughs> yeah. But she's going to use that again, uh, Jerry. <laughs> right, I like that. But, Just remember, you're the one that said it. Yeah. <laughs> no, hey. Um, but yeah, so that's whenever you, that if you were, if you see me whenever I'm on duty with my uh-huh. little, you'll notice my head's on a swivel. Mm-hmm. Not that, you know, I'm just watching for that wolf. Mm-hmm. And thank goodness, thank God, we have not ever had to mm-hmm. deal with that. But mm-hmm. going back to my professional life, I've dealt with a lot of wolves. Yeah. And so, you know, I have a, have a real comfort level. Oh, can I tell a funny story one time Absolutely. when I was on dude? Um, I'm not sure if I shared this with you, Jeff. It was during one of your services. Okay. Um, you had Jonathan and Allison and a few of the group what you're gonna say. stand yes. up. You <laughs> yeah, know, yeah. And they were like challenging so, you. Yeah, yeah. So the whole sermon was like, I, I said a bold statement. Yeah. And, and it was a question like, does, the, does anywhere in the Bible say this? Yeah. And I, I had prompted the other staff members to jump out of their seats and say, the Bible does say this right here. And they had the verse quoted or something yeah. like that. Yeah. And so anyhow, I was out in, in, in the lobby and, and, I'm, and I can hear the, uh, the PA system and, and I'm listening. And then all of a sudden I hear, and I didn't know it was Jonathan, but I hear this male voice with this challenging tone and I'm like, oh, no, not on my watch. And I'm like, well, you know, where is it? And I head over, and then I'm like, oh. <laughs> it's yeah, a- it reminded me to give more people a heads up on that. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, but, uh, but it was funny because as soon as I, you know, from my experience, you know, I knew what it was, and I'm like, yeah. oh, no, where is it? And it's like, and like 
then it's like, oh, those guys, they, they yeah, yeah, they got me. <laughs> well, that's what it was. It was a test. Right? Yeah. It was a test. Practice. Yeah. No, it's so funny because you did, somebody, I think it was you mentioned it to me that Sunday, and I was like, oh, I didn't even think about that, but I so appreciate the security team. I mean, you guys, mm-hmm. and I've heard from other people, you know, they 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 join the security team thinking, okay, this is going to be a Barney Fife, you know, you you just you check on things, right? but. I mean, we take it serious. Yeah, yeah we right? do. Yep. We, you um, guys, Aaron you guys, has all sorts yeah. of training. And, you guys train, you go and, out, you practice together, you communicate, yeah. you have a schedule, uh, you have radios, and it, it shows as a church, and especially as a security team. I mean, you guys take the security of our children, of our worship service, of our students serious. Yes. Um, and, you know, you never, you never think the worst case scenario is going to happen to you, but that's exactly what you guys are on duty for is the worst case scenario. Right. And so we so appreciate having that, that ministry team. I, I think your story can have some similarities to others in our church as far as coming out of a Catholic background. And something we say around here, you know, that we're not discounting backgrounds. You know, that can be a foundation for you guys. It, it was building, I'm sure, for different aspects of your life. Um, but something I've heard you guys say in different ways is... NCC has really opened your your eyes to what yes. and who oh, Jesus yeah. really is. Yes, and so I just oh. really appreciate you guys saying that and be honest, being honest with with those that are listening and hopefully encouraging them too. Because we have a lot of people that pop in and out, just checking it out, and a lot have that Catholic background, and you know may have not even taken it as serious as you guys did, and so maybe further behind in understanding and, and foundational things. Um, so a question I like to use to wrap things up as we come to an end with our interview here. Can you guys think of a, a of an act of kindness that someone did for you that you will never forget? An act of kindness. Just, just a way to uh, encourage our listeners to be intentional with their kindness towards others. Act of kindness you experienced that you never forget. Doesn't necessarily need to be recent. It could be something in the past. Yeah, one. Oh, it's kind of tough. Um, I'll let I'm throwing it at you. Some more. <laughs> oh, thanks. <laughs> um, I just think, you know, coming into this church, hmm. um, people are so kind. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I can give you an example. Okay, with the scans, I walk in and, you know, right away, you're asking me, well, how did it go? Mm-hmm. Rhonda's asking me, how mm. did it go? Um, Allison's asking me, how mm-hmm. did it go? It's like they genuinely care. Mm-hmm. Cool. And I think, you know, just they yeah. listen. Mm-hmm. I think listening is so important. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I could say that. Good. Yeah. Thanks for sharing. Sure. Yeah, and, and I'm going to ride the same theme that Cindy <laughs> oh, yeah. just had, you know. But no, everyone here is just so kind. Um, just, and here again, you know, I've been going to church my whole life, but it's different here. Um, mm. you know, the people, like whenever we were going to the Catholic church, well, you knew people by, you know, you'd see them, but there was no other mm-hmm. sharing, um, talking, no, you know, actually knowing them where, mm-hmm. I feel now, you know, this is my church family. You mm-hmm. know, you know, I I like have my my mine and Cindy's family, and then I have this is my yeah family, and yeah, cool. because I know about them, they know about me. You know, mm-hmm. we're and we just share, and there's this openness. Um, I just love coming here and being, you know, getting a chance to talk to some, you know, someone and just checking in on yeah. them, and then they check in on. On us, mm-hmm. you see how we're doing. It's a safe place. Mm. Yeah. It really is. I I come in here and I feel safe. Cool. Yeah. Where you go back out and it's like, ooh, all yeah. this stuff's going on, but it feels safe here. Yeah, and it should, right? You know, mm-hmm. a, a church should be a place where you can be honest and open with others and vulnerable, and like you said, then they help you and you can help them right. in different seasons. So. Well, I really appreciate you guys coming in and oh, thank let, you for let me us. interview a little yeah. bit. And, it was fun. Um, if you're listening to this and you're like, I wonder who Jerry and Cindy are now, 
check out Jerry's uh, name badge when he's on security <laughs> duty and, and find him or just start shouting in the worship center. And apparently don't Jerry, don't do but no, no, don't do that. Don't do that. Um, but I, I really do appreciate that coming in and my relationship that we've been able to grow over the years. And I really, really appreciate you guys listening to another episode of NCC Unplugged and spending some time with us and uh, some of your church family, your brother and sister in Christ. So uh, once again, thank you for listening. Have a great week. Thank you for tuning in to NCC Unplugged. If you've enjoyed listening to our podcast, we encourage you to share this with your friends and family. NCC Unplugged is available on all major podcast platforms. And if you're ever interested in experiencing Norwin Christian Church firsthand, we invite you to join us for our services every Sunday at 8.45 and 10.30 a.m. We have engaging classes available for all ages, ensuring there's something meaningful for everyone in our church community. For more information about NCC or any other inquiries, visit norwinchristianchurch.com 